What a great time to be a Giant, be a fan of the Giants. But we have something going here. We're building something special, and you know you can see it from the outside and inside. It's even more beautiful. Reflecting on everything that got me here, just to see that uniform, and you know I, I watched. That's the team I watched the most growing up. My dad was a Giants fan, so once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com. I'm your host, Art Stapleton, in the shadow of MetLife Stadium at 1925 Giants Drive, East Rutherford, New Jersey, where the Giants had their night practice here. Uh, The way Brian Dable has structured training camp, it has been three days on, one day off, three days on, and now they have tomorrow off. And today was the first day in pads, so I figured, why not? It's better. The best time is to come right into the car, set up my mobile podcast studio, which is essentially the front seat of my car, and pump out an observations podcast for all of you uh, who were not able to be here. Those of you who were, a lot of you got tickets as part of giveaways on social media from me. And that's all thanks to fans like yourselves who could not use the tickets. So if you were here, you saw what I'm about to talk about. And if you weren't here, well, listen up. So Brian Dable structured this practice uh, similar to the way most of his other practices go, he's got he had teamwork, uh, individual special teams periods. They had an install slash walkthrough period where the players take their helmets off uh, and basically go through some new stuff, working over it, uh, things that have been installed the day before or over the weekend. So down to the nitty gritty. To me, the player that I wanted to see tonight was Evan Neal. Uh, I think all of you realize the importance of Evan Neal on this team and his presence and what potential development of his game could mean to this offensive line when you have Andrew Thomas, who's developed into a stalwart uh, left tackle, and now you have Evan Neal at right tackle. Went through ups and downs last year, obviously, and worked on his stance in the offseason. Wants to be quicker to get out of his stance. And early on tonight, really through the first five practices of camp, we've seen a much more confident Evan Neal. That if it was a bad rep, he'd follow that up with a good one. But the reality is, nothing mattered until the pads went on. Now the evaluation starts. For Neal, the time in the spotlight is now. And I'm writing a story to post on NorthJersey.com for tomorrow in terms of Evan's perspective and where he's at. Uh, But let me open up the notebook and go through some of the things that I saw tonight and I think was very interesting. Uh, A lot of work for Evan Neal against Aziz Ojolari. In one-on-ones, Evan Neal's, he won the rep against Ojolari. Uh, rode him outside the pocket, or basically pushed Ojolari deep. By the time Ojolari was able to get back uh, towards the center of the pocket, Neal had won the rep. And if you watch Evan Neal, you could just tell he is a different player mentally this year as opposed to where he was last year. I don't know if he was ever 100% confident in what he was doing here. I think the speed screwed him up a little bit early on. I think he started getting tied up between certain technical flaws in his game versus what he did well. Uh, They were trying to tweak things. He was trying to tweak things. uh, And he just never got it right. Once he got it right, he got hurt. And he hurt his knee. And that kind of sidelined him for a while really derailed what he had been doing. So what I noticed most about Evan Neal is that he's definitely quicker out of his stance, was able to handle Ojolari's speed on the outside. He had a couple reps against Kayvon Thibodeau. Thibodeau beat Neal inside 
on one on the one uh, one on one rep, and then Neil ended up holding his own uh, in the game uh, game periods, the game management periods when it's eleven on eleven. The one thing there were a lot of reps where the play went to the left side and Neil was on the back side. So he was involved in some double teams, uh, ended up washing Leonard Williams out on a run, uh, just the way the flow of the pocket went. And he was out of traffic. So that, that was a good rep. Obviously. Um, I think, you know, overall we're going to watch Evan Neal the rest of this summer. And then when opening night, he goes up against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, a lot of people are going to be thinking about last year's debut against the Cowboys at MetLife and a year later how far Evan Neal has come. So it was fun watching Evan Neal, seeing the way he was performing tonight. I think he definitely showed uh, that just his body is at more ease. I think that's the way I would describe it. He just looks smoother in and out of his stance. Uh, you know, maybe the the eight pounds and the muscle he gained, he feels more comfortable in his frame. We'll see when he starts facing other guys from other teams and their pass rush moves. You know, he sees his ease a lot, and as he sees him, so these one on one situations usually are an advantage for the defense. Uh, and uh, I think night one, you have to come away feeling pretty good about Evan Neal and the changes he's made. Uh, and you just hope that can continue uh, through the rest of training camp, obviously, but then extend until the season and then beyond. Uh, a couple notes. I'll go through my, uh, my notepad here and see some of the things I, I definitely wanted to talk about. Uh, Alignment, Darian Beavers is still the linebacker with the starters next to Bobby Okereke. Uh, the Giants like what they're seeing from Trey Hawkins, the sixth-round rookie. I told you on Twitter yesterday they wanted to, look, they wanted to get a look at it. They wanted to see it in practice uh, before the pads went on yesterday in a couple periods to see Hawkins and Deontay Banks on the outside and then... Originally, it was Adoree Jackson in the slot. Adoree played a couple reps, but then they ended up giving him a vet day yesterday. Uh, so I think they're, they're not looking to burn Adoree out in the slot. So they'd rather just keep him on the sideline. Cordell Flott was in the nickel to start again for the third straight day. So it's pretty clear that he's getting the opportunity ahead of Darnay Holmes. Uh, that could change, obviously. Uh, but that's where they're at with that. Uh, on the back end, Jason Pinnock, he is, he's gotten, I think it's the third day in a row now where he's been the starter next to Xavier McKinney. They opened camp Pinnock on day one, Dane Belton on day two, and then Bobby McCain on day three. Well, it seems to be Pinnock has emerged from that group right now. Uh, he, he had a would be sack of Daniel Jones, uh, came on a blitz. You know, Wink Martindale was taking no prisoners today, and he obviously could have uh, done even more. So it was a challenge for the Giants' offense, which has really been humming for the first five practices with no pads and really no, no, no line play. The offense has really carried a good portion of the play here uh, with, Giant, with the Giants in training camp. Today, not so much. I think both, both sides had some plays. If I had to give a win, it would be to the defense. Uh, I think Nacho, um, Rakeem, Nunez Roches, back from the car accident in which he was shaken up. Uh, no serious injuries, thankfully. You could see in short run drills, run fits, he is going to make a difference in this run defense. He made two or three stops in the hole, uh, kind of shouting out. Um, just... You know, those primal screams that you want to see from guys when they make plays on the interior. And he's a down and dirty player. 
Uh, and I think, I mean that as a compliment, obviously, but I think that that fits this unit well. Um, it's not that they don't have guys who want to dig in, uh, but I think Nacho, which is what he wants to be called, really could have an impact on this team. I think it's a good signing by Joe Shane, the scouting department, finding the right guy to fit into this mix. Again, it's early. We know. I think we should get a dollar for every time we say it's early. Uh, and then we, you know, we'd all be rich and we'd be talking about what great things we can do, uh, you know, laying on a beach somewhere or sipping a Mai Tai, uh, or for me, it would be a peanut butter whiskey, but, uh, that's either here nor there. Uh, okay. A couple of interesting plays. Uh, Darren Waller had another big play from Daniel Jones, uh, probably about a 15 yard catch, just very smooth. They got Waller out of this game, out of this practice, uh, you know, again, you want to talk about how well he's playing. It's obvious he, he's just he's at another level physically. Another player that's at another level, and we haven't really talked about him much since the first or second day, is Saquon. And Saquon Barkley, uh, on a fourth and short, he had Waller out in front of him, and Daniel Jones hit Saquon Barkley for about a 40-yard catch and run. At the end, Xavier McKinney with a textbook hit and you know he popped Saquon pretty good Saquon pretty good but held him up and that's what you want to see in practice you know Leonard Williams talked about it earlier today he said you know look we all know we all get fired up when the pads go on he said but we've been working you know five days working on our technique working to be smart we can't just let all that go when the pads go on. And the Giants didn't. There were no fights, no scuffles. Uh, you know, look, you want to see some of that from your team. I don't know how the Giants and Lions are going to get through their joint practices next week without some scuffles. Um, that's, I mean, they're, they're really a rite of passage in the summer in training camp. But for the most part, the Giants, I think, did well uh, getting out of this practice. Uh, ended up going about... 90 minutes or so uh, out here. Weather was decent, 80 degrees, breezy. Sun was hot at the end of the night. High sun was very hot, uh, but not bad for uh, for August now in New Jersey. Uh, okay, John Michael Schmitz, first team center for the second for the third straight day. But if you think back to the spring when you talked to offensive line coach Bobby Johnson, the one thing he said about Schmitz was, let's see him that first day in pads against Dexter Lawrence. Well, Dexter Lawrence lined up straight up on John Michael Schmitz, and I'm sure the Giants wanted to see Dex bring his best. He's one of the best defensive tackles in the league, if not the best in a year, in six months, wherever it is. We know where that, what Aaron Donald is, but I think Dexter Lawrence is poised and primed to maybe make a run at that, uh, you may have ultimately the two best defensive tackles outside of Aaron Donald in New York with Quinn and Williams and Dexter Lawrence. Uh, one on ones, they had two where we saw the first one. Dex just completely overpowered John Michael Schmitz, uh, and you know, I think the strength of Dexter versus JMS, who is just getting used to the NFL speed, the NFL strength. That was obvious. The second one, I think you give it a, a, a tie, maybe a slight edge to Dex, but Schmitz kind of held his own a little bit. Didn't get bumped back too far. That was in one-on-ones. Now, when we went to teams, the presence of Dexter Lawrence for John Michael Schmitz reared its ugly head early on in the first 11-on-11s. Uh, Dexter, you could see, was dug in. It was almost like a bull, uh, you know, snorting, snarling in front of John Michael Schmitz. That's the way it looked. I couldn't see inside Dex's helmet, but that's the way it looked. And the first bad snap we've seen of training camp from John Michael Schmitz uh, went over Daniel Jones's head. Obviously, the play was dead. I think Schmitz settled down after that. He really wasn't pushed around after that. But I think it's a learning curve. And the Giants, I think they love the fact that Schmitz is going to have to go against Dexter Lawrence uh, 
if not all the time, a lot of the time. And I think that will only get him better. Uh, at least that's the hope in his development. So I like the way Schmitz came back. He didn't let that one bad snap kind of develop into further you know, sloppiness along the way. Uh, I don't think the Giants attacked him. I don't think Dexter Lawrence attacked him much after that. I think he kind of held his own. Uh, but that was certainly something that's of note. Uh, Trey Hawkins playing on the outside, as we said, again with Deontay Banks on the outside. Uh, Adore Jackson, they're being very smart with him. I think, like I said, they're... Given Cordell Flott time in the slot, I think there will be games when Adore will play in the slot or at least cover guys in the slot, the best receivers. CeeDee Lamb, week one, would I be surprised if Adore is in the slot? No, I wouldn't. I think he would probably follow uh, CeeDee Lamb into the slot if he had to. But Hawkins, stuck with Jalen Hyatt, made a... a I don't know if he gets credit for a pass breakup deep, but he certainly was there and high couldn't come down with the ball. They were tangled a little bit. Uh, so you want to give him a PBU? I think you do. Uh, Hawkins, a big play on the third round pick. And then a shorter route uh, against Isaiah Hodgins, and Hawkins broke that up too. Uh, one of the best plays of the day, and we're going to end today's show with this one with the one-on-ones in the receiver and the corners you had Deontay Banks against Jalen Hyatt with Daniel Jones throwing the ball Hyatt ran a short route it looked like Banks was sitting on the short route so I think if Hyatt hits him the next series with a deep ball who knows how Banks plays it but Hyatt made a good hands catch. Banks was right on him immediately. I think the force of Banks on his back jarred the ball loose from Hyatt before he could control the catch. It went up right into Banks' hands. He made a great play. Looked like he was going to have an interception. Maybe the whistle blows and he gets an interception. It did not in this case. And Hyatt made a great play to knock the ball out of Banks' hands incomplete. So a lot you had to like from those two rookies, the resiliency uh, in that situation, you know, Hyatt not giving up when he couldn't corral the ball and Banks playing the ball tough, even though Hyatt had it in his hands. Uh, I like what I saw from the two of those guys battling. Uh, and to me, I want to see more of that this summer. I think those guys could be uh, good matchups for one another. All right, so that'll wrap up tonight's night practice, first day of pads. Um, we'll be back on Thursday here. Giants are off on Wednesday. Thursday morning again. Giants go Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday night. Then they'll hold off on Sunday. They'll be practicing here Monday morning. I'm guessing it'll be a light practice because then they get on a plane, go to Detroit. I will be there in Detroit Monday night, God willing. Tuesday, Wednesday against the Lions in Allen Park at their facility. We will be there. We will. I will do multiple podcasts next week, likely more observations. Maybe we'll get some sound from players after practice. I don't think we'll have an extended interview, but we'll just have to wait and see. And then next Friday night, the 11th, preseason game number one, Giants-Lions at Ford Field. Appreciate you being all in. We're all in for you as well. We'll catch you next time.